This is Young Master Radio, your number one source for drama on the net. Do you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and Jesus can hear you too. Oh, you stole my dog out of my house? Hell no, I didn't. The dog was running free in the street. Bullshit. You son of a bitch. Fuck you, my man. What the fuck is your problem? Your mama ball is the problem. You're gonna get fucked up the asshole with the porcupine. The show starts now. Uh, so, we're here with a very handsome and very special guest. His name is Martin Knutsen, and he's from the great kingdom of Sweden, but he is also an American citizen. And one topic that really interests me is language, and how it's acquired, and how we use it. Uh, because uh, sometimes we're in scenarios where we don't speak the language of the other person, or... We meet foreigners, and we kind of wish that we were able to speak their tongues. And some people just wish, and then others pursue the goal of acquiring language. And we are two such people. And what interests me about Martin is that he speaks my mother tongue of English very well. In fact, if you listen, you will notice that he doesn't have much of an accent, hardly any discernible accent. He's learned it very, very well. And he speaks at the college level, and he's pursued his master's degree in... Wait, what was your master's degree? International Business and Trade. International Business and Trade. Yes, good, good, good. So, uh, give me a little bit of, uh, of, of background on you. Give me a little bit of background. Like, where are you from? Uh, I mean, yeah, you're from Sweden, but... Where specifically in Sweden are you from? What was your childhood like? Just a just a brief summary of who you are. Who am I? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I guess I grew up in the countryside of Sweden, uh, in a village. Um, and then I moved around a lot when I was a kid. And I ended up living in Gothenburg, which is the second largest city. Um, and then I moved to America when I was around 14, 15, and my English was terrible when I came to America, but uh, since I didn't have any Swedish friends in America, I, it really made it a lot easier to learn the language because it forced me to really immerse myself. Right, so when you came to America, where did you live? Hawaii. You lived, you moved to Hawaii. Which island? Which island? Kauai. Kauai. Yes, yeah. the little one, right? The little one. No, I'm no, no, the little one. The little little one uh, is close to to Kauai. But. It's little, but the size is the same as Oahu, which is the most populated island. It's a million people. Oh, I see. But uh, my island only has sixty thousand people, but it's the same size. So when you when you first went to Hawaii, your your uh, your ability was rather abysmal in English. Like, there is some Swedish, or er, uh, English education in Sweden, right? Yeah, but I was a terrible student, so I, was, <laughs> I even failed most of my classes right before I came to America. And I was able to talk to the, uh, what do you call it, a secretary or the counselor at the school, and she asked me what my grades meant. She didn't understand the Swedish <laughs> grading system, but so I told her all the Fs, all, all the... Um, in Swedish it's IG it means non-pass ikigutent I told her that IG means uh, B so all my fail became B <laughs> and that was almost like more than half of all my classes so that was really good alright cool yeah um, good stuff awesome so I imagine that when you came to America and you started take going to school in Hawaii that you had to take some sort of extracurricular English classes to catch up your English? I went to a really small private school, so they didn't have any of that. But we were able to um, pay some extra money to the math teacher that I had in the first year, only the first year, because he was willing to do it. He he, he, put, he um, uh, let me... Um, um, he gave me some extra attention, maybe an hour per week or something, where he would explain what all the math terms meant, because they're different in Swedish. Um, uh, but that's pretty much it. I didn't have that many special 
uh, classes. So the school is really small; it's less than a hundred students for the entire high school. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, so how did you acquire English? You must have, if you didn't really take any like grammar lessons or whatever, then you must have done something. Well, I think uh, growing up in growing up in Europe or in the West, you have a lot of English influence in the media. So you have in the back of in the back of your head you have a lot of English. You just don't know how to you don't know how to use it because you haven't you almost never spoken in English. You just mm. you just watch television and you, you so you have an idea. Uh, so there are a lot of there are a lot of instances of exposure, but yeah, few opportunities right. to use it. Right, exactly. So, so um, that's the major advantage of learning English because you, you have it in the back of your head, but you uh, you just haven't practiced it. Uh, and uh, in the beginning you're always really shy so you have to put yourself in an environment and I think that would work for Koreans too you have to put yourself in an environment where um, there's no other uh, people who speak your language right. <laughs> I can't imagine there are many people in Hawaii that yeah. speak Swedish No, especially I, at your level it was only my family, my mom and my dad but whenever I'm in school I, I had to speak in English it's really hard in the beginning Ask me questions and I wouldn't really be able to answer them clearly. It was really hard. So you basically used your base, and you used your base uh, knowledge of English to build upon it in America when you came. So you didn't really have to like study, really. No, and I didn't study in Sweden either. That's a funny thing. I just, <laughs> I just learned it from being alive in Europe. <laughs> so, so but we. I think being Swedish, you have more exposure to English than in other parts of of Europe. For example, in Italy or in Germany and some other countries, there they dub everything, literally every, everything. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's hard. It, it, I mean, they don't even they don't even have uh, you know English or uh, Swedish or Norwegian or Finnish versions of Pokemon. It's it's an English. And those are like kids, kids things. Usually, kids stuff. Gets really, don't have they don't have Swedish Pokemon. No, they don't have Swedish Pokemon. They have the intro song in, in the Pokemon. Well, they have well in the cartoon, but the game, the game. Oh, the game. The game. They don't. It's oh. it's in English still, which is a little disappointing. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, what was what was the what was the biggest challenge for you when it came to learning English? I mean, it was your first foreign language to 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 really learn proficiently, right? Uh, what was my biggest challenge? It's really hard to describe because I think it was very uh, sub subconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, biggest challenge I think was to fully understand what people were saying, and then forming the sentences and structures and uh, understand fully understanding. Uh, I mean, you have an idea what you want to say, especially mm -hmm. in English, if you have a lot of exposure to the language, but. It's really hard when you actually speak, when you actually formulate your thoughts and say what you want to say, compared to knowing what you want to say beforehand. Because you, you have a language, you have a native language, so you, you, you know how to understand the, the whole, the whole of, 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 of what you want to communicate. Mm. But it's still really difficult, I think, uh, unless you've had a lot of practice. I think practice and just speaking and just even if you fail... You just have to keep doing it. You just have to keep, keep trying, even though you sound stupid. Or yeah, I think that's the only really good way, and also one of the largest challenges because you have to have the confidence, and it's really easy to be made fun of if you sound like an idiot. Oh yes, in America especially, we have very low tolerance for yeah. sounding foolish in English, and you'll see wars all the time on the internet of of people. Uh, bugging each other uh, on about their English, right, right? Like it's not I, it's me, or it's not me, it's I, or mm -hmm. it, you're not spelling your properly. Yeah, and I think you forget your apostrophes. Damn it! <laughs> if, you, if you don't say things correctly, you might be people might consider you to be of lower intelligence, perhaps <laughs> in America. That, that seems to be the general perception. Yeah. 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 So yeah, and especially in Hawaii, it's. Uh, colloquially, it's quite right. different. Yeah, they, they speak penguin. Uh, pi penguin? No. Pi pigeon. 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 <laughs> it's, another, it's, different, it's another bird. <laughs> yeah, pigeon. And uh, my, my brother speaks pigeon, like normally. He can speak normal English, but he speaks pigeon with his wife and his friends. 
but uh, it's really different from regular American English. It's uh, they skip a lot of words and uh, they see like instead of want. Mm. I like one of those. I like to do that. <laughs> those that kind of speaking and they speak a little bit faster too. I would say. Uh, I don't know. If I'm speaking with another Hawaiian person who's speaking in pidgin, I I might be able to uh, speak a bit in pidgin with him, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know. That's a bit weird, though. Swedish person learning Hawaiian English, I think. (laughs) It's interesting. That's awesome. So has your your experience learning English uh, helped you in in pursuing other languages? Mm, I think so. It's given me more confidence, at least, if nothing else. Uh, It made me think that it's possible to learn languages at all. Because uh, uh, if you only know one language, it could be you. You think you have less confidence in thinking it's possible. So I remember when I was a kid in Sweden, I wanted I wanted to be able to communicate fully in English, but I was terrible at it, really bad. Even when I'd had my, because my dad's American, but he speaks Swedish to me. He never spoke English to me. So whenever he had family coming over and they would ask me questions, uh, I wouldn't be able to respond um, in a in a uh, uh, normal normal response I would just uh, have the completely wrong response to whatever questions they would have oh my <laughs> yeah, really strange but no, it was fun it was, but yeah I, I don't know it's always uh, fun to sound, sound stupid to others I think uh, <laughs> but uh, in the end I think you, 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 you'd you want to have a, a better comprehension or um uh, I think it motivates you if you have some uh, strong interest in the culture or uh, something about, um, yeah, some. It's got to be something. You got to have some kind of interests in the target language culture. I think. It has to it has to be relevant for, yeah. to you. It's not like you can. It has to be relevant. I couldn't just like decide. Oh, I want to learn Italian. Yeah. You know, just for shits and giggles. Well, if you really like spaghetti and uh, <laughs> you want to go to Italy and and have some good. Right. If you have that goal to to go there, but yeah. you can't. It's I, I've I've tried before. I've tried learning Greek, for instance. I have yeah. absolutely no interest in going to Greece no. or, or doing anything Grecian. Yeah. Is that is that the right? Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but I tried learning it anyway. It doesn't work because uh-huh. it's not relevant. You always learn what's relevant to you. That really helped because my, I had family members who were American, so that really encouraged, yeah. encouraged you me. You live in the culture. You had another yeah. branch of your family that was mm. American. See, I don't have any family members in Korea, but I've had strong interest in the culture and many has, aspects. Has it has uh, has uh, your the fact that you've learned English helped you with learning Korean somehow? Uh, I think so, because just the more words you know, you you, you have more meanings uh, that you can you can associate with the words, the new words that you're learning. So there's a lot of words in English that don't exist in Swedish, and also the other way around. Mm. So it helps you remember, I think. Your associative memory, I think, will be enhanced the more languages you know. Right, and there are a lot. There, are, there aren't many. Uh, uh, Korean has a lot of borrowed words from English, but uh. not so much from Swedish, right? No, 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 not so much. Have you have you encountered any borrowed words from Swedish and Korean? No, uh, it's not necessarily just borrowed words, but uh, there's also meanings and definitions and, and ways of speaking that can be better understood with with just by knowing uh, other meanings that are similar hmm. like definitions of c- certain words or even grammar points um it's it's less direct while well, if you learn english you know swedish it's more direct it's like they have there's words that even exist in english uh, that are in swedish as well right right so that makes it a lot easier yeah mm-hmm. korean's like a i guess a language isolate and swedish right. and english are like linguistic cousins basically. but then but then just learning languages in general yeah. uh the more you learn the easier it will become just because you know so much more yeah. in general I i've say. i've trifled with a lot of languages and the the lear- the learning curve is is less steep with each successive one i think definitely uh, do you have? You're pretty linguistically experienced, and so do you have any advice for anyone who's seeking out the elusive fluency 
you know, I mean, yeah, it's sort of a subject, it's sort of subjective and not really well defined, but right. if someone's seeking fluency and proficiency in a second language, what advice can you give them? Is there any like really key advice that you think they should know? I think everyone has their own method of learning a language and, mm. Uh, but the best advice I can give is to really immerse yourself in some topics uh, regarding the culture that uh, um, the culture of the target language um, that you're learning. Right. Uh, so if you, mean you, wanna, like, you mean like get in- interested? Yeah, right? get interested because that's the main thing. I think if you you just gotta you just gotta have interests. And the stronger interests you have in the in the country and culture. Uh, the easier it will be to learn the language. I think if you have a really strong interest in learning Spanish, for example, or st- strong interest in, in, in Mexican culture, for example, I mean, then then I think it will be a lot easier to learn Spanish. Mm, right, yeah, right. That kind of thing. But there's no, I mean, in terms of uh, special ways of learning a language, I don't know. It's, that's like you said, it's very subjective. And some methods are proven to be better than others according to certain studies, but... You never know, and everyone learns differently too, I think, because you have different ways of learning, and some people pick up on things differently. Mm. I mean, I know I, I, I learn pretty well through uh, um, by, by copying, copying what I, I, I read something, and I can write something very similar. Mm, mm, mm. I can assimilate things pretty easily, and, uh, um, but, but then the other things I'm not very good at. I don't know, like I can't really... I don't know, it's hard for me to talk about, but right. you, you get the gist of... But, uh, yeah. but would you, would you, would you, uh, some people say that, I've heard some people say that you really need to study hard and buckle down and do it, and other people say you should just let it flow, what do you think? I don't think so, I think I remember, I'm not sure, but mm, we have a common friend, Evan, mm-hmm. he went to uh, Ecuador, and I don't think he he I think he studied Spanish in America in high school, but he wasn't very fluent at all before he went. And I don't think he even studied Spanish in school. He learned it from just being around people and just practicing whatever he knew and expanding upon that. Mm. So I think if you just have a a basic understanding of the language, it doesn't even have to be that. Seems like it seems like it, it snowballs. You 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 yeah. have you have to you have to make the snowball, and yeah. then and then after that you can just roll it down the hill, and right. it'll build up upon itself. Yeah, and that if, sounds, yeah. sounds similar to what happened to you. Right, when you came right. To America. And if it was really frustrating in the beginning, and but if you have the interest and the ambition, I think you can learn any language, uh, in any in in your own way. Without you don't have to sit down and have to do the traditional way of memorizing words um, in a book, I don't think it's necessary. I think just being around the target country is probably the best way, but it's also not the necessary either. But I think it's the best way, in my opinion. But I think um, as long as you have the interest, and motivation is very important, I think. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being being in Korea has helped me with my motivation of, yeah. of learning Korean. A bit exactly. Because... Because you're 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 dropped right there, and you sort of have to use. It. I mean, there are people who get along well enough without learning in Korean, and they mm-hmm. stay here for years. But uh, still, being here has really given me lots of reason to learn Korean. I can't say I'd be as enthusiastic about learning it if I was still in the states. Mm-hmm. All right, sweet. All right, that's a that's a wrap on this one. Uh, Martin, I'd like to thank you for the interview. Uh, that's a wrap. Until next time, this is Young Master Donald at Young Master Radio.